Hi guys, good evening. Uh, we shall start in uh, a minute's time. All right. Yeah, please log in, log in. You know, we would like to uh, have a very lively session again today. Yep. So we have about 40 minutes to go. Okay, hi guys. How is it going for you guys? It's MCO day 26 today. You know, it's good to have you guys uh, on live again today. You know, and uh, we, you know, uh, there are quite a few people that have joined us. You know, one of them is Hadaki. Yeah. Hadaki Wong has joined us. Uh, Jensen Tan has joined us. Uh, Logan has joined us. Hi, Jeffrey. All the way from down under, yeah. Uh, Jun Xiang has joined us as well. You know, uh, he's my nephew, yeah. Casey, hi Casey. Good to have chat to you this week. You know, Logan. You know, hope you are well. Yes, I'm well. I'm well. Hi Ian. You know, fantastic guys. Zaf. You know, Jeffrey Joseph. Good to see you guys. Yeah, Zaf Long also from uh, down under. Yeah, good. You know, good to see you guys, yeah. Hi, Araki. You know, good to see you as well. You know, Desmond Lim has joined us as well. You know, Zanjir has joined us as well. You know, Firus. What's up? Brilliant. Good to see you, mate. You know, Jeremy Lee has joined us as well. You know, yeah. First of all, you know, last week, you know, uh, that was my first live, yeah. You know, and uh, it was an unbelievable session. Uh, I wanted to just share for an hour, but uh, I end up sharing for about 90 minutes, yeah. you know, uh, it has been a fantastic time, you know, uh, that I have with all of you, you know, so keep the questions coming in a short while, you know, and, uh, you know, we should take it from there, okay. So now it's day 26 of uh, MCO, yeah, you know, and uh, I would like to know how many of you are dying from not driving for four weeks now, you know. And how many of you would love to be able to go for a long drive again? Okay, give a thumbs up if you agree. You know, if you have been missing a drive, you know, give me a thumbs up. All right, and uh, you know, in order for us to go for a drive sooner, you know, I think we have to be patient now. Yeah, you know, and uh, sit it out. You know, and do dog dam dam as our prime minister say. You know. Because if we start going around, you know, the virus starts spreading around again, you know, we got to sit longer at home, you know, and we cannot go out and drive even more. So that is going to affect us even more, yeah, you know. So, you know, we got to give a thought about our frontliners, you know, uh, which are working, you know, very hard in the front line. It's, you know, our doctors, our nurses, you know, and all our hospital caregivers, yeah police officers, you know, those working in essential services, you know, and also all the Grab and Food Panda riders as well. You know, we got to remember them, man, you know. And, uh, all right, you know, so we got to remember these people, yeah, you know. Okay, keep the questions coming, you know, and uh, I shall try to answer them as much as possible, yeah, you know. All right, uh, I haven't seen any questions coming in yet, you know, let me see if there has been any questions, you know. I'd like to he wish everybody Happy Easter as well, you know, uh, you know, it's a really a fantastic week that we have here, you know, uh, since Friday, yeah, and, uh, you know, we had a good Friday service, and then today we had the Easter church service as well, all right. Okay, just let us carry on from here. Let me see whether we have any questions, yeah, you know, from uh, any of you guys, yeah. You know, you guys can ask me anything about cars, yeah, no problem. 
Yep. Let me see here. Tana Kristen has joined us. Krishna has joined us as well. You know, Hugh Fenfu has joined us as well. Yeah. All right. And uh, yeah, a lot of guys are here for your Teh Tarik. Have you got your drinks with you or not? Uh, I have mine here. Yeah, my Teh Tarik. All right. Okay. Banyak kawan on the line here today. Fantastic. Johan Rosli. Oh, good to see you here. Ian Lim, you know, everybody is here, yeah, but today no answers for me, uh. damn cool. <laughs> okay, Logan here, you managed to pick up your right, haha, <laughs> two Corrados and a Porsche, yeah. No, the Porsche is actually belongs to my customer, yeah, you know, and I've been taking care and rebuilding that car since uh, 2011, you know, uh, till now, you know, we completely rebuilt that 964. You know, and uh, you know, up to today, we are still taking care of that car. Yeah, you know, a very very nice car. It's a 964, uh, 964, which is the first four wheel drive Porsche. Yeah, yeah. You know. So that's a very very nice Porsche, and uh, you know, the values of that car has really gone up in the past 10, 11 years. You know, so that has been fantastic. Yeah, you know. Yeah, everybody's saying hi. You know, everybody's having a party here. Fantastic. <laughs> yep. Who is Fyrus? Fyrus is sub. Sub is Fyrus. Is it not? <laughs> okay, SP Lai has joined us as well. Sai LV. Cool. Cool to see you guys. Yep. Happy Easter to everybody again. You know. Uh, okay. I got a. The first question coming in here, Ivan Tu, you know, it's asking me, hey Mike, any difference between 95 and the 97 tune? Okay, uh, there is a slight difference in uh, 95 and 97 tune. Um, with the 97 tune, we push things slightly higher, yeah. Uh, what we do is we push the uh, timing and uh, some of the peak boost, you know, slightly harder on the engine uh, to take advantage, you know, of the. Uh, higher octane fuel, yeah, you, know. you know, that's what we do, all right, and uh, with with the 97 tune, you know, basically, you know, you should get slightly more horsepower, yeah, you know, um, with the 97 tune, when you don't have 97 fuel, we recommend that you don't actually uh, push the car as hard, yeah, you know, if you got, if you cannot find uh, the wrong 97 fuel, all right, uh, if you drive normally and slowly, you know, you are good to use uh, Ron 95 fuel when you uh, you have a Ron 97 map. Okay, I hope that answers your question. All right, Ivan. Okay, you know, uh, what other questions do we have here? Let's, let me see. Yeah. Everybody is watching, wishing me happy Easter, happy Easter, guys, you know. You guys can ask me anything, yeah, you know, including, uh, okay, so what Fyrus has here, Subsonic. Okay, Mike, your Corrado, when are you passing it over to me? Oh, you got to ask my two boys, uh, that one, you don't ask me. <laughs> you got to ask Isaac and Brian Yap on that, you know, unfortunately, uh, you know, that those two cars are theirs. So you got to ask them, you know, not me. <laughs> Okay, where's the Tay Tarek? I have the Tay Tarek here, guys. You know, Jasper. You know, you got to make your own, unfortunately. You know, if not, next time, you know, you can come by, you know, during the MCO. And I think life will change after this, you know. Even though if we can go for our drives, you know, I think there will be this social distancing, yeah, when we drive now, you know. Uh, when we head down to the Mama for Tay Tarek, you know, we got to be one meter away from each other, you know. So we got to uh, practice social distancing, yeah. You know, I think even though if we can start driving again, say in May, okay, uh, I think all of us will go bonkers now. You know, if we get to drive again, yeah, okay. Okay, what's the next question here? Grey Burial, thank you for joining us. You know, you guys have been fabulous. Everyone as well. You know, last week you were with us as well. You know, okay. Mike Lim is asking me, I'm Mike, you know, uh, any map for 5282015, definitely we have a map for the uh, 528 uh, N20 engine, yeah, you know, no problem, we do have a map for it, you know, come and see us, you know, we, we can sort you out, yeah, you know, 
and uh, you have pretty nice gains on those cars as well if you run a non-97 map you can get about 40 horses and uh, another about eight about 70 newton meters of top yeah, you know from your car all right i hope that answers your question you know that's a very good question and uh, actually that engine you, you know is shared between the uh, 328 the 428 and also the uh, what other engines are uh, the Z4 as well, yeah. You know, all those engines uh, are being shared, okay. And even the X4, all right. All right, and uh, Sean Jeep is asking, what would be the main benefit of going stage two for F10 520 520i now on a stage one, okay? All right, um, if you go to a stage two again, you know, it's like uh, you are unleashing another 20 percent of the engine's potential yeah you know uh, when you go to a stage two uh, with your turbocharger being released with without restriction eh? because when you're on stage one you still have your down pipe in there which is the catalytic converter in the uh, exhaust system there's still some restriction from the turbocharger yeah you know the spooling of the turbocharger is not as fast you know and uh, basically we won't push it as hard you know and uh, when you go stage two we'll push it slightly harder you know we will change more parameters uh, in your ecu and you will notice that your high end and mid-range power is a lot better yeah you know when you go to a stage two tune all right and don't worry with our stage two tune what you get is also very very good throttle response you don't lose any of that in fact the throttle response is even better and uh, you'll feel that you know the car rushes to the red line even faster the engine will rev faster okay you definitely will feel a difference highly recommended i know you are on our stage one tune you know so whenever you are ready go for stage two tune and our 8 hp tune for the bmws yeah you know we have a very nice 8 HP tune for the BMWs as well, those cars that are running on the 8 HP gearbox. Alright, I hope that answers your question, Sean. Alright, and uh, what else? Happy, happy Easter to you as well, Jasper Yap. You know, brilliant. Hi, he. I hope you are keeping safe in Ipo, yeah? He, 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 you know. I uh, hope you're. Mercedes A180 is running well, you know, with our stage 2 tune now. You upgraded from stage 1 to stage 2. I know you definitely felt the difference, you know, up when you upgraded your car from stage 1 to stage 2, yeah. You know, uh, he, he, you know, when we tested the car, I said, wow, I didn't know that's another big change, yeah, if you know, with my car, all right. That was what he, he told me, all right and he he is also uh, in a watch party here and uh, in our tetaric session here you know if you guys are not not sure you know you guys can actually uh pm him directly yeah you know uh, i'm sure he will answer you guys you know he's a very nice guy from uh ipo all right you know okay what else do we have here Okay, Johan Rosely, what do you think about the Iris 1.3 manual transmission for first fun car around corners? Very good question, Johan. Uh, I haven't exactly driven the uh, Iris before, you know, but I've driven the Persona, Persona before, yeah, you know. And uh, one thing I always like about Proton cars, you know, has been their ride and handling of the cars. You know. uh, I think, you know, for that price bracket, you know, for the price segment that they are in, uh, the Proton cars has the best ride and handling, you know. And I think Johan, you know, you have chose chosen the right car, even though it's just a 1.3, but with a manual transmission, you can learn a lot from that car, yeah. Why? Because the chassis is uh, pretty well sorted, you know, by the Proton boys, you know. Uh, why? Because of their Lotus background, yeah. You know? And uh, those guys, you know, are really good, you know, with their ride and then their handling. All right, I think you won't go wrong with it, you know, have fun with it, you know, and uh, you should be able to upgrade certain things in the suspension as well, you know, and uh, it will take your handling levels to uh, to a higher uh, plateau, yeah, all right, you know, as, as you learn, you know, driving the car, okay, all right, we got Isaac joining us here, hi Isaac, How, say hi to Isaac there, <laughs> 
and Isaac say hi to everyone there. Yeah, you got some Jasper hey. is online there as well. Yeah, okay. I hope that answer your question, Johan. All right. I know you you are wanting a drive. Yeah, you know, just like us. You know, we are suffering. You know. Okay. Okay, Benny, we got a question here for me. Yeah, some engines are turbocharged, some are supercharged. But is it too complicated to have both together to twin charge? It's like what VW did previously. Okay. I'm having my data rig. You guys have your data rig as well. Okay. Um, it is actually uh, quite complicated and complex yeah, yeah, to have both the supercharger and the turbocharger uh, working um, in harmony. Yeah, yeah. Because um, what we, VW did is that uh, from the low RPMs, they are, they are working on the supercharger. Yeah, yeah. And once it reaches the 3000 RPM mark, that's when the turbocharger takes over yeah you know there's a flap in the engine you know that actually direct the airflow to the turbocharger at that point so during that point when it's when when it's um uh, it's uh, turning from uh, supercharged to turbocharged uh there is a slight torque dip here yeah, you know uh within the two three hundred rpms when the flap opens yeah to transfer the air from turbocharger to the uh, supercharger so you know everything there's a lot more mechanical parts in it uh, you know and also there's a turbocharger to it and there are quite a few more sensors yeah why because you need a sensor for the boost on the supercharger side and you need another one at the turbocharger side as well yeah um, the benefit of this engine is that uh, at low end you know you have the turbocharger uh, sorry the supercharger pushing you you know for on the low end yeah? and then you have the turbocharger taking it over from the mid range you know on the higher rpm you know so you know you get the best of both worlds yeah? all right uh, but of course it's a complicated system uh, as a lot of the vw 1.4 twin charge owners have discovered you know the early engines you know have the problem of uh, the piston failing yeah, you know uh, that is not to that is not the problem of the uh, the whole engineering of it but just the poor quality of the pistons itself yeah, you know where there has been a lot of failure rates you know and also because of the high compression you know there has been uh, quite a few detonation issues you know if you are not using the right fuel and the engine and uh, with our hot climate it didn't really help yeah. but then again you know uh, Volkswagen dis discovered the issues and uh, with the uh, late uh, twin charge engines you know the uh, they don't longer have the uh, piston issues on those engines yeah and most of those cars now uh, they have either had the engine replaced piston replaced or upgraded their pistons already yeah okay uh, with that particular Volkswagen engine you know you have that dreaded dry clutch seven speed transmission as well yeah you know but then again uh, it's no longer a difficult uh, gearbox to sort out you know because there are so many that people that can actually fix that gearbox now could be your clutch or mechatronic you know these guys can fix it all right and if you're not sure where to go uh, you can get in touch with me you know I'll send you to the right guys okay I hope that answers your question Benny all right let's see happy Deepak happy Easter to you as well Deepak you know good to see you here all right okay let me see Thomas Hing has joined us as well Jun Hing has joined us as well Oh, Thomas Heng and Shu Hui has joined us. Yeah. Okay. I can't go back anymore, Isaac. Uh, okay. Sai Alvi is asking me, can you tune for older cars? Uh, you know, 96 Unichip piggyback. Okay. Uh, most of the 96 cars, I think, except for a few BMWs, you know, we can tune them wire your 20 port dongle yeah you know um 
other than that, you know, most of the other uh, European cars, you know, we have to change the chip on the engine. Yeah, let me show you. I think I have a chip here somewhere for my Corrado. Uh, let me see here. I think next week I can show you guys uh, Corrado engine. I mean the Corrado ECU. Yeah. yeah, I have the chip here. You know, my old school boys will know this. People at Hadaki and all this. Okay, see that? We used to change chips like this, you know. So, yeah. Okay, so we used to change the chip like this on the ECU itself. All right. You know, uh, this goes back a long way, yeah. You know, uh, it's not as convenient like how it is now, where we all we need to do is just tune the car wire OBD. All right. Thank you. That's a good question. You know. So let me know what. What car is yours? You know, uh, we still will be able to help you out, yeah. All right. Okay, let me put that back. All right. Let me see what's the next question here. Yep. Okay, Ginny Lim here has a question for me as well, yeah. Uh, N twenty stage two. Is it advisable to change the stock intercooler, or the stock one will do the job? Okay, uh, an intercooler is always recommended, you know, but then the intercooler size is very important, yeah, you know. Uh, if the intercooler is too big and your turbocharger, you know, is uh, struggling to feel the air in the uh, intercooler, you know, you will lose low end power and top end power yeah you know because your turbocharger is working super hard you know just to fill up the intercooler itself all right okay i hope that un answers your question all right and uh one more here is that han ming is asking me why does it seem that some stage two tunes have verbal sounds from the exhaust part of the tuning Yes, uh, the bubble or crackle sound, you know, as we call it, it, it is uh, extra option that we have, yeah, in the ECU tuning, you know. Uh, we have that uh, options as well, you know, bubble, uh, sometimes we call it, uh, and then another one, we call it the bubble, the crackle, and another one is popcorns, you know, and pops and bangs as well, you know. So with pops and bangs, uh, we don't really recommend that, you know, uh, we always try to tell the customer that uh, pops and bangs do hurt the engine, yeah, you know, and uh, it does affect the life of the engine, okay. With crackle, um, it doesn't affect the, uh, the life of the engine, okay, but with pops and bang, it does, alright, because what it does is that sometimes the back pressure can go back into the engine, so that's not good for the engine at all, okay, cool, you know, thank you. All right, and uh, oh, thank. Hang on, let me just see here. Okay, I lost track of uh, the questions. Okay, T Tony Lau is here. Uh, Everybody saying hi to each other. You know, happy Easter to you, Deepak. You know, Tony Lau. Okay. Yeah, everybody asking them, asking each other about, uh, sorry. Okay, Mike Klim. Yes, I remember you were asking me a question earlier on again. And stage 2, round 97, how much can we gain real horsepower with a uh, downpipe and filter installed? Yeah. Okay, uh, typically you should be able to get an additional uh, easy 15 to 20 horses more yeah you know going to a stage two all right from a stage one and your torque will go up by another 20 newton meters easy yeah, you know uh, might be and i hope that answers your question yeah okay logan is raven is saying his cla hi logan yeah he he his car was tuned by us uh just before uh the uh lockdown yeah i think two to three weeks before the lockdown yeah so you know if you guys want to know more about uh your tuning for your mercedes you know you guys can check with logan there as well yeah i think he doesn't mind you guys pm uh pm him directly as well yeah and you guys can ask me as well 
Okay, Brian Lee, William here is asking me which is the best car to buy for performance and low maintenance costing. Wow, uh, that can be quite challenging, yeah, you know. Um, when you mean performance, uh, it depends what what you want from performance. Yeah, is it on the handling department, or is it from the uh, engine performance? All right, but if you're talking about balance. Um, between uh, handling and performance you know and learning how to drive again uh, I would recommend uh, either a GT86 or a BRZ why uh, the reason being is because uh, first of all I would say uh, the car has exceptional handling balance on the car and uh, it's available in both automatic and manual as well you know one of the last few performance cars available in the marketplace you know with uh, a manual transmission all right and that car is very balanced as well yeah uh, that this particular boxer engine you know you do have a bit of a top dip as well yeah you know at the 4000 rpm mark and uh, that can be sorted out by just a tune bias you know and uh, the low end uh, as stock standard is not as eager at the low end and the mid range you know uh, with our tune we will sort that out you know so yeah you can really enjoy the car a lot you know so that would be my recommendation uh, nowadays the car is not so expensive either you know and uh, you know you can drive it uh, almost every day as well yeah you know only thing the car is a bit low slung and whatnot you know but then you know it's a performance car all right and uh, it has quite a big boot behind there as well so you know you you can still carry your girlfriend and uh, carry a lot of stuff you know and if you're a biker you still can throw your bike your bicycle at the back of the car yeah all right i think that would be my recommendation all right and uh let's see you know uh oh my my niece has joined as well goes to end hi you know hi terence how are you terence you know happy easter to you mate you know uh, miss you at church today <laughs> we can't really go together all right yes your oh thank you for uh you know for your good kind good kind words here yeah, about tuning your uh, bmw and your mark 7 golf yeah all right yes okay john kelvin Koo. hi hi mike how much can you improve on an NA engine, you know, like the BMW E90 325i? Okay, with the N20, uh, sorry, the N52, N25, uh, 25B engine, you know, with uh, 218 bhp, you know, we with the stage one tune, you know, we are looking at about 15 bhp, yeah, and about 20 newton meters of torque. Uh, to enjoy the full benefits of the tune, we would always recommend that you go for stage two, stage two catalyst tune. Yeah? Why? Because the, with the stage one tune, you are only getting the benefits of about forty percent of a stage two tune. Yeah, especially on the N fifty two engine. Yeah? And once you unleash, you you decap the car and and uh, do that downpipe out and uh, put in our tune you know you can get another seven to eight bhp more and uh, about 10 newton meters more of torque but you know the whole throttle response and the way the car revs to the red line is very very different you know and uh, basically you free up the engine and the way the engine revs the red line is very nice you know we would guarantee the results on those cars you know and uh, you know I think uh, Terence which is also here you know one of my customers he's uh, N52 V25 uh, engine as well you know uh, that was tuned by us you know uh, the benefits of that tune has been fabulous you know and on top of that you save fuel as well you know because the uh, engine you know is a lot freer revving and uh, you know so you are saving the planet as well why because you are running the car more efficiently okay i hope that answers my question all right the next one is uh your ecu map uh, this is from 
Andy Tung yeah. Okay, your ECU mapping is personal mapping based on the cast modification parts or pre map in the ECU device. Okay, um, with especially with our stage two tunes, you know, um, it is all custom to your car. You know, uh, that's why you know we need the tunes to come back overnight from the UK yeah, because uh, with our stage two tune, you know, we look at each file individually. All right. Hence, that's why you know it takes longer than uh, than others out in the marketplace. Yeah. All right. I hope that answers your question, Andy. Okay. Okay. Benny Ui has another question here for me. A 1991 W124 Merc 2.6 liter. Would it be tunable? Uh, yes, but not cheap tunable with the 2.6 engine. Uh, what you can do is a very old school uh, tuning method on that car because on the 2.6 uh, engine that actually runs on the mechanical fuel injection on those cars yeah, you know, and that runs on the Bosch K Jotronic system and uh, what you can do with that is actually we call it the warm-up regulator uh, adjustment yeah you know but not many people can do that anymore you know if you adjust your warm-up regulator nicely you know you can gain a little horses a little bit more horses and the car runs smoother you know but not many people can do that any longer all right i hope that answers your question benny all right Oh, okay. Uh, I got Chris V here, you know. Hi, Chris. Thank you for joining us. All right. Yes, Chris, you were asking me uh, if he can tune his 1999 E39 523i. Uh, yes, I can, Chris. You know, come and see us. You know, uh, you know, let's come catch up with us after the MCO. We definitely can sort out your uh, 523i, you know, and uh, gain that one if you do a stage two you you can gain quite a few horses all right look forward to seeing you with your uh 523 yeah chris you know thank you for joining us okay i've got another question here eugene Ui. what are your thoughts of tuning a stock rs8 okay uh with the rx8 uh i haven't tuned that uh locally here before but my guys in the uk has you know uh with the rx8 all right with the RX-8, uh, I think I'm not too sure on the gains, you know, I'll get Isaac here to check for you if we can actually, uh, what are the gains on those, yeah? We'll get back to you shortly, alright? Okay, just let me see. Uh, JY Saw has joined us as well, thank you for joining us, JY Saw, you know. Uh, Jensen Ko, my dealer in Penang, has joined us as well, alright? Okay, Buck Hafiz for 335. If it's okay to tune to stage 2, I want to maintain the original IC. Uh, IC is actually the intercooler, yeah. Yes, you can tune to stage 2 first, you know, and uh, later on, if you want to install the intercooler, you can install it later, alright. Uh, but what we can do is uh, we will just install the tune as a stage 2 tune for that car and uh, what we will do is uh, we will tune uh, quite a few more parameters on that car you know and uh, with our RON 97 fuel you should be looking at about 80-90 horses gain on that one yeah, you know and uh, you should be getting what 380 to 390 bhp uh, but that is depending on your engine condition. All right. I hope that uh, answers your question, Mark. You know, I spoke to you earlier this week as well. Cheers. Okay. Brian, do you open uh, twice weekly during MCO? Uh, yes, we can uh, operate during this time because we are part of the essential services. You know, please make an appointment with me because I'm not always back at the shop you know even though my shop is open uh, reason being is because I want to be uh, a responsible citizen to everybody yeah. you know I hope you understand during this time yeah all right and uh, you know please make an appointment with me you know uh, definitely we can meet up because uh, you know we still can tune cars for you not an issue at all all right okay with the RX-7 let me see here yeah I mean, sorry, RX-8, okay. Uh, RX-8. 
Okay, with the RX8, you know, we, with the Stage 1 tune, we are looking at 15 bhp gain and also a 20 newton meters of gain. Yeah, all right. I hope that answers my, your, your question, yeah, you know, that you have for us. Yeah. Who was that gentleman that asked me about the RX8? Uh, Oh, it's Eugene Wee, yeah? You know, hope I answered your question, Eugene. All right. Yeah. Uh, Eugene, is yours uh, 231 BHP or is it, there's another one which is 192 BHP, you know? Uh, let us know which horsepower is yours, you know, so that we can advise the uh, horsepower gain for you again, yeah? All right. Thank you. Okay, next question that we have here. Where do I get Golf Mark II, Sirocco Mark II parts within Malaysia? Okay, all right. Uh, the best place to actually get Mark II parts in Malaysia is actually two places. All right, uh, one of them is actually Sisun in Jalan Ipoh. All right. And another one is uh, Concept Auto Parts, yeah, down in Oakland Road, you know, and basically these are the two places to get your Mark II parts, yeah, you know, your Mark one, Mark II parts. Or if not, then you got to go to, it used to be called VW Heritage, it's no longer called VW Heritage in the UK, you know, these are the people to look out for, okay. And uh, this is where you will get uh, Mark one, Mark two, Mark three parts, all right. Uh, they are getting quite difficult to get nowadays, you know, uh, but definitely uh, still obtainable, yeah. Okay, it's the body parts and rubber parts that are getting more difficult, yeah, and some of the plastic parts as well, you know, for this class. Okay, all right, what else? Mm -hmm. All right, let me see where else. Uh, oh, Vince Thomas, hi, good to see you here. Hi Rachel, good to see you. Ellen Cove, hey, good to see you. My son, good to see you as well. Yeah. Stephen Chia, nice seeing you. How are you how how is it going for you? Yeah, I Isaac Yap has joined us here. <laughs> okay, Lance Chong has joined us. Hi Lance, you know. Adam, how is it going in JB? Hope all is well, you know. Okay, Ginny Lim. Uh, is it advisable to change the stock into cooler or the stock one will do the job? Okay, uh, with stage one, I think you can still stick with your stock into cooler. But again, with your stock, with your stock, uh, if you're going to stage two, I would recommend that, uh, you know, you find a, a good intercooler, yeah, you know, for your stage two tune. You know, uh, intercooler typically, you know, not, not more than 30% bigger than your original, yeah. The reason for that is that you want balance because if it's too big, you're going to lose low-end torque and your turbocharger will again will struggle, yeah, you know, to fill up that huge intercooler there. All right. I hope that explains the, um, your, uh, my, uh, your, un I hope that answers your question. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay, Jenny. Yep. Okay, Brian Lim. You know, have you tuned DRZ and GT86 before? What are the differences? Okay, uh, there are no differences in the engine ECU actually between the two cars. Yes, yes, we have tuned these two cars before. And, you know, basically, you know, uh, with your original mapping of the engine, uh, the BRZ and the GT86, you know, the uh, throttle response is uh, pretty poor, you know. And also, the car is very laggy when you, you know, when you put your throttle down. Yeah. You know, you got to wait for a second or two before the car actually responds. And even though when it responds, you know, the uh, the engine is quite gruff and loud. Yeah, you know. And after our tune, yeah, you will feel that the engine not only being unleashed, it will rev a lot faster, and also the engine. Uh, noise vibration and harshness is much less yeah, you know and uh, that is what uh, our stage one or stage two tune will do to the BRZ and the GT86 you know 
all right I hope that answers uh, your question okay okay Eddie Kinson is asking me yeah okay what is the different tuning on dyno machine and pre map tuning okay um, nowadays with the modern ECUs you can't really tune the engine on the dyno yeah? you know why because uh, with the new ECUs you know you got to reflect the ECU you know you cannot do live tuning on the ECU uh, unlike on the old cars you know where you can change certain parameters in the ECU yes. but with this modern uh, ECUs you can't do that you got to reflect the entire ECU um, what you can do maybe on the dyno you know I don't do it on the dyno I do it on the road is we do logging uh, of the engine yeah? you know parameters you know I will run the car on fourth gear from 1500 to 2000 rpm all the way to the red line and I will take the logs from the engine you know and you know we will take the readings and see you know how's your ignition timing you know how's your boost pressure running you know throughout the rev band you know whether the car is running reach lean you know. so these are there are a lot of parameters that we take you know and to ensure that the engine is running well you know and uh, we definitely uh, love to do more of on road dyno uh, on road uh, logging rather than on the dyno because the loads on the dyno cannot really replicate the real loads that you get on the road all right um, because even on the dyno you know when you have um, the horsepower difference of 10 to 15 horsepower on the dyno you know it doesn't always translate to uh, the performance on the road yeah. you know, because out on the road you are not driving the car only on fourth gear like they do on the dyno but you are driving it at various gears and at various uh, throttle input as well you know so when you are at 50 percent throttle you know on the dyno cannot tell you what's happening with 50 percent throttle on the dyno all right more importantly on the road is how your car respond when you throttle down and also when you change gears you know and how the engine you know picks up from there you know whether it's seamless laggy you know these are the important points to remember all right i hope that answers your question okay samuel shik is asking me all right hi mike is the sweet spot is you tunable and roughly what are the gains okay the sweet spot is tunable but we have to take the ecu out from the car to tune yeah you know on that car you know uh to tune that car you you need to drop the uh, the car and the ecu and the car to us for a couple of days yeah, because we need to open up the ecu to uh tune okay definitely tunable uh with the swift yeah that one that, with the Swift, I think you know you're looking at about, yep, yeah, that's the one. I think you are looking at about. Just give us a minute here, yeah. So if your original BHP is 136 uh, horsepower, you know, uh, with our tune, you should be able, with the Ron uh, 97, you should be able to get about 12 horsepower more, and about 13 newton meters of torque more, yeah, you know. But more importantly, uh. So far, of all the NA cars that we are tuning, you know, it's that throttle response again, okay, and how the car reacts, you know, uh, when you put your foot down. Yeah. So far, uh, of all the NA cars we have tuned, uh, we haven't failed to do any of that. All right. Okay. I hope that answers uh, our question here. Okay. Just let me get some tea here. Okay, why do you choose to do road tuning? This is from uh, Chong Ruzong, uh, Zhu Rong. Yeah. Okay, um, what are the differences? Okay, um, when you are doing uh, dyno test, dyno runs, you know, you are just running the car at full throttle. Okay, and another thing is. Uh, you wouldn't be able to replicate yeah, 
you know uh, how the car feels when you are half throttle or when you are third gear or when you are in fifth gear you know the gear that you don't use on the dyno yeah? and another thing is that the load is very different you know when you are running on the road and running uh, out on the dyno uh, for instance you know a good example for you guys is uh, when you go to the gym right okay when you're on the treadmill okay you can easily run five kilometers okay but if you get out to run on the road you know tell me which is more difficult running on the road or running on the dyno you know uh, if you have done that before you know the answer to that you know hence that's why you know uh, to re replicate real life driving you know we do it on the road okay I hope that answers your your question yeah okay uh, Rujong yeah all right Marvin Fung yeah he's asking me a question here and uh, how many horsepower gain can I get from a stage one with the F56 Mini Cooper S okay uh, okay F56 Mini Cooper S should be you should be able to get about I think yours is should be 194 horsepower yeah you know if it's the 2 liter engine you know, and uh, you should be able to get about 70 newton meters uh, 70 horsepower I think you know just let me very quickly check it out here I think you know that should be the figure and about 100 newton meters of torque yeah just let me yep that's the one 192 Oh, sorry, it's uh, 50, 50 horsepower, 45 horsepower more and about 70 Newton meters of torque. Sorry, I got it the other way wrong. Uh, wrong, yeah. We had drawn 97 fuel, okay. I hope that answers your question. Yeah. What was his name? Don't move it so fast. Mm. Okay, that was Marvin asking me that question. Yeah, sorry. Okay, Brian William. You are asking me about ZRZ, ZRZ, yeah, you know, whether it's tunable. Yes, uh, we can tune those cars, you know, uh, not mistaken, the gains has to be about 30 horsepower on those cars, all right? Uh, quite a big horsepower gain, as I remember, all right? Just let us very quickly check it out here, all right? Okay, let's get to the next question. Know, uh, while Isaac is checking out the horsepower for the CRZ, alright. Hi Jeffrey, you know, uh, good to see you Jeffrey E. Okay, he's just saying hi to us there, you know. Thank you very much, you know. Uh, CRZ, do you have it there? Yeah, I think it, not mistaken, you should gain about 25 horses, yeah, you know, from uh, the CRZ, all right? And, uh, you know, that is the horsepower you would gain from that car, all right? Hi, Sherry. Happy Easter to you, Sherry. You know, thanks for joining us, all right? Yes, Jeffrey, we should get together again after the MCO, yeah, Jeffrey, you know, uh, are you back here in, in Malaysia or are you in Melbourne? Yeah, let me know. Hi, Evan Lim. Thank you for joining us. Daniel Tan Chung Hong. You know, thank you for joining us. Yeah, you know. Um, you know, before I carry on further, you know, we have already done forty-seven minutes so far. Yeah, you yeah. know. Okay, before we carry on further, you know, um, uh, we I had had a fantastic time. You know, with you guys uh, last week. You know, uh, unfortunately, we we did not. Um, get the chance to you know say thank you to you guys you know and I'd like to take this opportunity to thank uh, all of you guys yeah you know for joining us last week and this week yeah and uh, you know I'll try to share more things with you guys you know uh, not only about cars you know and also you know uh, you know if you guys would like to talk about 
uh, other hobby stuff, you know, things like hi-fi, you know, uh, and stuff like that, you know, uh, that is something, you know, we can talk about as well, all right? Um, I just want to see where I want to take my live, uh, this live show, you know, I want to see where we should take this, you know, and I would love to get feedback from you guys, you know, what, what else you guys want to know from my channel here, you know, and uh, we would like to, uh, you know, hear from you guys, you know, so drop us a message, you know, uh, where, what else you want to hear from us here, you know, uh, if you guys want to talk about suspension, I can talk about suspension setups as well, you know, because I like cars that uh, rides very well, and at the same time, uh, with great handling, you know, especially for our Malaysian road scenario, yeah, because our roads here, you know, is not the best in the world. <laughs> you know, it's uh, really quite bumpy, you know. So, you know, for our car to drive well on our roads, you know, the car should be able to absorb the bumps, you know, properly, you know, uh, confidently, you know, so that, uh, you know, you can tackle the corners at speed, yeah, you know, so that you don't have to compromise, yeah, you know, slowing down, you know, to take the corners. Because if your suspension can absorb those bumps and actually take the corners, you know, it's faster than cars that are super hard, you know, that you have to slow down before the corner because of the bumps. Alright, I hope that answers that. Uh, let me see if there are any more questions here. You know, I got Daniel Tan Chung Hong here that just joined us. Edwin Lim as well, you know, thank you for joining us. Uh, Kyung Zhu Rong, you know, is asking me again. Hang on. Where is that? I lost that. Okay. Yep. Which one? Oh, what's the highest stage tuning you guys provide for N20? Okay, for N20, at the moment, we just do do until stage 2, yeah, you know. Um, but if you have stage 3 requirements, we can do that as well, all right? Uh, with that, please uh, PM us directly, you know. We want to see what are the hardware changes you have done on your car uh, so that we can tune the car accordingly, all right? And uh, as I said, you know, from there, from uh, for stage three tune, you know, we would need the car, you know, most probably for a week or ten days. Why? Because we would need to get the base parameter from your car, you know, running it with a stage three base map, and from there, you know, we will do uh, road runs on the car, and actually do the tuning uh, on road, you know, and uh, make the changes to we get it right, you know, uh, before we send that car back to you all right so we can do stage 3 stage 4 tuning as well um, so that is all based on the, your hardware changes that you've done on the car all right okay i got a question here uh, from william moy as well yeah hi mike which tuning stage would you recommend for uh, f10 520d what are the pros and cons? Okay, good question um, that you have here. That is, uh, what's his name again? William, yeah. Okay, uh, the 520D is a very tunable engine, you know. Uh, I do not know whether yours is with the uh, later engine or the earlier engine, yeah. But both we can tune. Um, with this engine, uh, we have seen uh, 190 over horses out on the dyno, you know. That is basing on the previous uh, E90. Uh, we managed to get about 420 newton meters of torque as well. Yeah, you know uh, that is with our stage two tune. Okay, I hope that answers your question, William. All right, and uh, we still got about eight minutes to go. Uh, all right, you know, hit us quickly with your questions. Can a CVT gearbox car be tuned to higher horsepower? Okay, uh, the only CVT gearbox that we can tune um, on the CVT itself is just on the Audi CVT, yeah? you know, that's the only one where we could take out the uh, TCU parameters to be tuned, okay. Yes, uh, CVT cars, we can definitely tune it for higher horsepower. We have done a lot of uh, Audi 1.8 
uh, and two liter front wheel drive cars yeah we have tuned many of those and those cars are still ru running strongly okay because when we tune a car you know we tune a car to the uh, specification uh, limits of the car yeah not beyond that all right thank you i hope that answers your question all right uh, this one is, is it better to get with the s mode zrc yeah uh yes i think you get the later models it would be better yeah the crz yeah definitely you know with the s plus mode all right uh it's less restrictive okay uh brian william has a question here for me is uh comparing the gt86 and crz which stage have best gain and talk oh okay we are talking very different cars here all right uh i would say go for the gt86 because why uh, with the GT86, there are a lot more performance uh, modifications that you can do with the GT86, whereas the CRZ, the CRZ is uh, less. There are less things you can do to it, and less less things that you can do to it, and there are a lot less hardware that is readily available to tune the CRZ. Yeah, you know, and again. You know, one is a two liter engine, one is a one point five engine. So, of course, the potential of a two liter engine is more. Yeah, uh, as you can remember, we always say there's no replacement for cubic centimeters. All right, we are running down to our last ten minutes. That's quick, unbelievable. Okay, and uh, there is a question: alignment and suspension. Hmm? What? Is Eric? No. Oh, hi, Eric. Eric, hi. <laughs> no, that's not the one who was asking me about the alignment. Yeah, him. Oh, okay. What was he asking me about the alignment? He never asked. He just asked to talk. Oh, okay. Uh, I have. Eric here asking me about alignment and suspension. Okay, uh, with with cars, you know the alignment setup and your suspension setup is really important because uh, if your alignment is not set up properly, you know, then what will happen is uh, you if you are not set up properly when you go through a bend, you know your wheels are always fighting with each other. Yeah, you know. So you, what you want to do is to tune your car to a way the suspension and align it to a way where you know it's dynamically helping you into a corner you know and helping you on a straight line as well so it's a bit of a compromise here you know so it depends whether you you want on road settings or whether you want it for autocross settings or whether you want it for circuit driving you know all the setup is again very very different you know so you know with certain uh, setups you know we will even do toe in yeah, you know or toe out on the rear so again it depends on the, the application okay uh, the same goes for the suspension setup as well yeah you know okay we are running out of time three minutes more to go <laughs> okay what kind of tuning for polo 1.2 tsi and, and uh, how much we get out from it okay with the Polo 1.2 at TSI, we have stage 1 and stage 2 tuning for it, okay, uh, for the Polo 1.2. With the Polo 1.2, uh, you you are getting about 25 horses gain, yeah, you know, and about 45, 50 Newton meters of torque gain, all right, with the Polo, you know, and uh, you straight away get much, much better drivability, drivability of the car. Uh, again, recommended to do stage 2, okay, highly re recommended. Uh, the Polo 1.2 is a fantastic car for town driving, yeah, you know, uh, the acceleration is really nice, you know, uh, on the mid-range, especially for that 1.2, it's a really a little pocket rocket, okay. Alright, I'm just going to take one more question, you know, we're going to end very, very soon in 2-3 minutes time. Okay, hi, I have a 15-year-old Ford Lynx RS 2.0, feels getting sluggish as it's 
it's getting older can this model be tuned uh, I'm not too sure on this model um, most probably I don't think we will be able to tune the uh, RS the Lynx RS yeah you know uh, those are, were, are really nice cars for its time yeah you know the Lynx RS okay one more question to go yeah uh, what tune is on my VW okay uh, which VW of mine <laughs> okay uh, uh, definitely uh, all my three VWs are on the uh, DNA tune yeah all right uh, my Mark 5 is already I think I'm going to change the turbocharger now <laughs> So in the next cup after MCO, once I get my turbocharger done, you know, I will be, I should be running a stage 4 tune in that car. All right. Uh, I will definitely post a video on it. You know, once that car is done, you know, uh, let's see how, how it goes. Yeah. All right. And my Corrado's, uh, both of them are running stage 2 tunes. Okay. All right. You know, uh, one more last question. We've got a minute more or so to go. Okay, hi, uh, hi Mike, this is from uh, Hon Shen Eng. Hi Mike, does mapping changes the utilization of the supercharger on a 1.4 twin charger? Yes, it changes it, definitely. Um, we don't make your supercharger run any harder, you know, we, what we do is uh, we just remove some of the limiters to a very safe limit and to make your car a lot more responsive at the bottom end and also at the top end here, you know. Uh, with this one, we could also do the crackle, all right, with this engine. Okay, uh, where is the best place to do alignment? Brian William is asking me, come to my shop. We can uh, do real alignments for you guys, all right. Um, stay tuned to our channel, all right. Uh, in the next couple of weeks, we should have certain things that are quite interesting, and uh, you know, I'll be introducing some giveaways for you guys as well. You know, so you know, stay tuned. You know, I've had fun with you guys today. You know, um, I, if anything that I can't answer this week, you know, definitely I will answer them next week. All right and uh i would like to thank you guys for tuning in today you know and uh, i've had fun with you guys you know if you haven't liked our uh, dna tuning page you know please go and like it and if you haven't also subscribe to my youtube channel you know please subscribe to my youtube channel uh we will have more and more content coming out in our youtube channel you know um all about car tuning yeah and also uh, car improvements all right thank you very much guys for joining us and uh, stay safe you know and uh, be good you know if they are not good today you know we might have to do 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 lama lama you know all right cheers guys you know go ahead and uh, press like in our facebook all right and uh, subscribe to my youtube channel mike yap all right cheers guys good night bye